Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Romeo, Lima, Whiskey, Portable 7. Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Romeo, Lima, Whiskey, Portable 7. Good afternoon to you. You're 5 and 1 in Texas. The name is Rod. Yourself? Roger, Rod. Roger. The name here is uh, Kevin. Kilo, Echo, Victor, Indian, November. I'm running 30 watts, 30 watts in an RV to a doublet antenna in the desert outside of Yuma, Arizona. Over. significant power. So 30 watts in a doublet out of Arizona. That is remarkable, Kevin, and a real nice contact to have. I'm most surprised to have this QSO. Um, having said that, I did speak to another Arizona station earlier, and he was very strong, but he's a mile up in the sky on top of a mountain. Uh, so amazing. You're in the desert. I would love to know what the weather's like over there. Kilo Bravo 9, Radio Lima Whiskey 7, said S1 Oscar Papa Bravo. ZS1, Oscar Papa Bravo from KB9RLW. Well, very good. Uh, I pumped it up to 40 watts, uh, so hopefully that's a little bit better. Uh, the sun has come up. Uh, the temperature here is uh, in the low 50s Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, we're going to go up around 70 Fahrenheit. Um, I don't have a calculator handy to do the calculations, but it's quite comfortable. Quite comfortable. By afternoon, it's a t-shirt weather here. Very nice. Uh, so I'm thrilled to get my first contact ever in Cape Town, and I am running on an experimental doublet antenna that I built for a video. I do a YouTube channel for ham radio. You can uh, look for my call sign to find it. Uh, and I'm uh, hoping I can use this QSO as part of the uh, video for the antenna. Is, is that okay with you? Over. This is absolutely fine with me. It'd be an absolute pleasure. It'd be very nice to, go, to get world famous with your video, Kevin. And uh, I'm, re I'm really surprised, you know, because uh, I, Arizona has always been a very difficult state for me to work up until recently. So up until about two months ago, that whole Arizona, Utah, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana area, that kind of strip up and down the states was extremely difficult for me to work into. And now I'm finding propagation is moving across the United States, and I'm able to work into your part of the world relatively easily. So it's great hearing these stations out of Arizona, and as I said, Utah, Wyoming, etc. It's really, really new to me, so it's great, co great contact for me. And by all means, stick it on a video, and I'd love to see a copy. KB9, Radio Lima Whiskey, Stroke 7, ZS1 Oscar Papa Brothers, FQ7. ZS1 Oscar Papa Bravo, KB9RLW. Well, I'm thrilled as well. Like I said, this is my first contact into South Africa and Cape Town, so it's a, it's a, grit, it's a big thrill for me as well. Well, uh, just uh, get on YouTube and look up my call sign, and you'll find my channel. Uh, this video will be up in probably about a week, uh, but there is a previous video on the build of the doublet, uh, so you might find that one. And uh, thanks very much. I'll let you go work a few more while the propagation holds for you. 73 from Arizona, and uh, have a great day or afternoon for you. <laughs> this is KB9 RLW Stroke 7. Back to you. Okie dokie, Kevin. KB9 RLW Stroke 7, that is 1 OPD. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to have a contact like this. Really great. So I'm putting you in QRZ.com, etc., on all the online logbook of the world, etc. And if you're looking for a paper QSL card, I, uh, my QSL manager is November 4, Golf November Radio, Dan. He's handing my paper cards from now on. So we'd love you to get a card from you or an acknowledgement. That would be really cool. All the best to you in the desert in Arizona from Cape Town, South Africa. And have a wonderful uh, weekend and a fantastic Christmas, New Year to you and the family, Kevin. It's been an absolutely wonderful surprise. KB9, RLW, stroke 7, ZS1, Oscar, Papa, Bravo, 73, Kevin. Enjoy the desert. 73, thank you very much. Woo! Oh, yes! I love this doublet. Well, that was a thrill. It's a chilly morning here, by the way, hence the hood. We're getting into the dead of winter here in the desert, and the mornings are starting out around 42 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put the Celsius over here. Uh, so anyway, that was a QSO I had the other day 
uh, at the, in the morning right after sunrise with uh, Rob over there in Cape Town, South Africa. Just over 9,700 uh, miles. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, obviously propagation was good. Uh, 17 meters had opened up early, so propagation was good, and that had a lot to do with it. But the doublet, being a 110-foot dipole, uh, was performing exceptionally well up on 17 meters. It probably looked a bit like a porcupine if you looked at the uh, radiation pattern, because if you have a, a long antenna at a very high frequency, you'll have multiple waves on that antenna. And each of those current peaks will have a lobe um, of electromagnetic radiation, you know. So that long antenna probably had a radiation pattern like that, you know, with, well, four <laughs> uh, lobes on it, you know. So one of the lobes was just pointing in the right direction. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was thrilled. Um, that was my first South African uh, contact. And uh, that was right here in the RV, running 30 watts and then 40 watts uh, into the doublet. I am very pleased with the doublet. Um, it's the best uh, dipole that I've used on HF. It performs really well on all the bands with the tuner. Uh, unlike with the coaxial fed dipole, that, that minimal loss on the feed line makes a massive, massive difference in the performance of the antenna. There were some comments on the build video about weather affecting open wire feeders, uh, moisture. I could see that if you were using open wire line and you had moisture across the insulator, it's going to be somewhat conductive. It's going to change the characteristics. Uh, I did have one comment from a guy that said that his doublet worked great in the drier, arid climate, but when he went uh, moved east where he was in a more humid climate, he didn't have the same performance. I can't test that. It could be, it could be right. That kind of makes sense. Uh, but I also had comments from other people that said that they didn't have those types of problems. Um, I do recall back in uh, Michigan when I was a kid, the first ham I ever visited used a doublet. He had open wire feeder from his shack from the back of his tuner through a slightly opened window, wooden framed window, right up to his antenna. Uh, and uh, it seemed to work for him in Michigan, uh, especially southwestern lower Michigan where I grew up was a very humid climate. Uh, so I don't know, you know, it might be performance might be degraded just a bit if it's if you're in a snowy, wet, rainy um, climate. But uh, I can't test that here. All I can comment on is my build of it and uh, the tests out here in the desert. Now, uh, it, dis it, it does perform really, really well on uh, 17 meters. Uh, I've listened around on 15 meters. I've yet to make a contact because the band hasn't been open, but I have heard the FT8 stations, so I could do some comparisons with my other antennas. And uh, the, the doublet is performing really, really well, uh, better than any other dipole that I've used that was coaxial fed by far. Uh, I even made a short QSO on 6 meters with it, uh, and it, uh, it did pretty well there. So um, yeah, it's, it's a very flexible multi-band antenna, but you do need a tuner. Um, I had a QSO the other night on, uh, or the other day on 40 meters too with a young ham. Uh, we'll take a quick look at that. The name here is uh, Kevin, Kilo Echo Victor, India November. And I am in the desert uh, near Yuma, Arizona in the southwestern corner, running about 30 watts into an experimental uh, doublet antenna that I put up, uh, how copy up there. Five and four, Kevin. Five and four. Kevin, can you repeat your uh, call for me, please? I just uh, tuned in to uh, 7.185 uh, when I heard you call CQ. Oh, uh, yeah, the call is uh, Kilo Bravo Niner Romeo Lima Whiskey. Kilo Bravo Niner Romeo Lima Whiskey. And uh, I'm running uh, 30 watts. And you're about an, uh, an S7, peaking around S7, hovering around S6 uh, here, uh, Scott, over. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm running 100 watts here through a uh, Hustler 4 PTP uh, vertical antenna with radials. Okay, well, it's uh, it's doing well. Uh, uh, what was your location again, Scott? Over. My location is uh, Prineville, Oregon, in Central Oregon, the high desert. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. Well, well here, we're here in the desert as well, uh, in an RV. And the sun just came up over the mountains, uh, 
so I should be getting some solar on the panels here soon, hopefully. I'm off grid. And uh, as I said, it's a, a doublet antenna uh, that I just built for a video I'm doing on it. Uh, it's about a 110 foot uh, doublet with about uh, 35 feet of ladder line to the RV. And then I've got a 4 to 1 ballon outside the RV and a short piece of coax inside to the tuner. Uh, and I'm running an ICOM uh, 7300 uh, at uh, presently at 30 watts. Over. And of course I've been using it on 80 meters. Now it's a little bit short on 80 meters. It's only 110 feet, but it works pretty well. Um, there I could do a little bit of comparison uh, with my uh, 60 foot mast vertical, which is uh, currently resonant on the lower end of 80 meters. Uh, so it's very close to resonant on the upper part of the band and I only needed a slight tweak from the tuner. Um, to bring the vertical in. So I could do a comparison there. Now, yeah, I'm, obviously I'm comparing an, an inverted V to a vertical, so there's some polarization difference there. Takeoff angles are different. Uh, some stations are going to be better on the uh, uh, mostly horizontal doublet. Some are going to be better on the vertical. But let's, let's take a look at that clip. Just a quick comparison between the doublet and the 60-foot vertical. Now, the 60-foot vertical is resonant at the low end of 80 meters so it's pretty close to a resonant antenna up here um, and then the doublet of course is passing through the tuner so net control is come on come on where'd he go there he is about 10 over 9 on the doublet now i just switched to the vertical And as you can see, about the same level. Oh, okay. Go ahead. What's the name and where are you located? Right and then here's the doublet. That station came up to S8. Yeah, just a little bit lower on the vertical. Here's the doublet. And he's peeking around S8 on the doublet, so a little bit better. Net control 20 over on the doublet. Yeah, peaking about the same. So, even though the doublet is a little bit short on uh, 80 meters, it's only about 110 feet. It's performing really, really well um, on 80 meters. So yeah, it's uh, comparing very favorably um, to the other antenna. And... You would think being a little short, you'd have some trouble with it, but as as it is with a doublet, everything is through the tuner, and they do work well a little bit lower in frequency than their half wavelength, um, whatever it happens to be. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm just really happy with it. Uh, it's going to be my go-to HF antenna for a while here in the desert. Anywhere I move to, I'm going to try to put it up because it just works so well. Uh, in fact, I've hardly used the other antennas. Uh, now that I've had the doublet up, it's been my favorite HF antenna. Um, what else was I going to say about it? Um, oh, uh, I had a few comments back on the build video from people that were talking about it, its resonance. And uh, there's, there's a misconception there, I think. Uh, so a regular dipole antenna in free space at its center will provide an impedance around 74 ohms. If you get it a little closer to the ground than a half a wavelength, that impedance comes down a bit, which a lot of us end up mounting them that way because of logistics, just we, we don't have any other choice. Uh, and so a coaxial fed resonant dipole works pretty well and provides a very low SWR, usually 1.1, 1.2 to 1, somewhere in there. You'll always have a little bit of SWR um, just because there's always a little bit of mismatch there at the center. The dipole could be providing 70 ohms of impedance and the coaxial cable feeder is at 50 ohms. So that little bit of mismatch at the center will always create a little bit of a standing wave ratio. Now with the doublet, uh, even if you're operating on the frequency that the actual antenna elements are half wave resonant at, 
at that center point, you have an even larger mismatch built right into the system. You'll have around 74 ohms of impedance on the antenna, but you're feeding it with ladder line or window line, you know, a balanced feeder, that's going to present a characteristic impedance of 300, 450, or even 600 ohms, depending upon the type of open wire feeder, or anywhere in that range. So right from the get-go, there's a very strong mismatch at that feed point. So even if you're at a resonant frequency that the antenna is cut for, you're going to have high SWR and you're going to have to use the tuner. The tuner has to be used on the doublet for everywhere you operate it at. Um, the upshot, though, is with the low loss on the feed line, uh, as we talked about in the build video, even if you have stand those standing waves on the system, and that, you know the signals are bouncing back and forth, bouncing off the ends, coming back down. That's what a standing wave is. Uh, eventually, those those that energy ends up on the antenna wires, where there's no other wire with an opposing current, and electromagnetic fields get set up and it radiates. Right. So, um, as we saw in the other PDF that I talked about in the build, uh, what the author said there was eventually that power ends up radiating on the elements. You know. So. Uh, it's it's a really neat antenna. Uh, I'm real happy with it. So I hope you found that informative, and if you have the opportunity to build your own doublet to play around with, I think you'll enjoy it. It's a it's a really nice single multi single antenna for multiple band use. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.